to master simple before you can tackle advanced. It's actually life changing what happens when you just do the simple, straightforward thing consistently. That is how you make moves. That is how I've been able to grow Side Hustle Pro. You're listening to Side Hustle Pro, the podcast that teaches you to build and grow your side hustle from passion project to profitable business. And I'm your host, Nikayla Matthews Okome. So let's get started. Hey, hey, guys, welcome, welcome back to the show. It's Nikayla, and I am back with a solo episode to kick off January. I'm here with my tea. This is the first day of 2019, and I think this is becoming kind of a tradition for me, sitting down on the first day of the year, really reflecting and talking about how to make 2019 great. So I hope everyone is doing well. Let me know how it's going. Make sure you join the Side Hustle Pro Facebook community and check in throughout the year. This episode comes highly requested. And I like that because I always like knowing that you guys are interested in in what I'm about to talk about, especially on the solo episodes. So people have hit me up, wanted to know more about my systems that help me turn my podcast into a business and specifically about my goal getter action system, because I talked about it a little bit in 2017, some in 2018. I know I always mention it, but I haven't done an episode where I've really broken it down in a while. And I know I have a lot of new listeners. So going to do that today. And I've saved this one because to be honest, I don't want to misrepresent myself to y'all. Okay. I think sometimes people think I'm this always on top of it person. That is the impression that some people have. And if that's what you are expecting to hear from this episode, from the title, sorry, but that ain't what this episode is going to be about. (laughs) And this is not to knock myself either. I do get a lot done, obviously. Otherwise, I wouldn't have a revenue generating business, right? I obviously have to be productive at some point, but I am also a very flexible person person. My methods are not like other people's methods at all. My methods work for me and I know they work for other people. And I like sharing this because I think it takes away a lot of that pressure we put on ourselves to do things a certain way where we think, okay, this is what success looks like. It's like those articles that you see on Fast Company and stuff like that. I think it was J.K. Rowling the other day who like retweeted something about someone who was like, this is my secret. I work up at 4 a.m. And she's like, oh, shut up. (laughs) And I love that because, yeah, it's, it's time to kind of debunk those myths about that's the only way to do stuff and get stuff done. So I need you to know that you don't have to be on it all the time to win at business. You don't have to be together all the time. For example, I too have wasted a day watching Married to Medicine on my couch when I should be doing a million other things, okay? That's not the point, though. That's not the point of the episode. What I watch and when I do that, that's not what the point is. But the point is that you can have a bad day. You can even have a bad week, but you can also have a system that allows you to bounce back and get things done and be able to do that more easily each and every time you have one of those little breaks. And my system, that's why I call it the simple system, is for side hustlers like yourself, like I was, who have a trouble getting back into a rhythm after you've had a bad day or a bad week. I get you. Like you are the person that I relate to the most because I know what that's like to kind of spiral because you had a bad day. So this system helps you to get back into a groove when that happens. All right. So let's first just take a step back, though, and talk about this new year and how we're going to approach it. I know for me, I feel way more ready this year. Last year, I knew I was going to have a lot of fear. And that's why I made my focus word fearlessness. To be honest, I don't know what my focus word is this year. (laughs) But last year, it was fearlessness because it was my first year of entrepreneurship. And I just didn't know if I could do it. I wasn't sure what the year would bring. And so 
Although I worked through the fear, and that was the point of making that focus word, I definitely worked through the fear, but I always had that underlying fear that the other shoe was about to drop, that something was about to happen to mess this all up. And that informed a lot of how I approached the year. So I was just focused on, you know, doing my work and making sure I didn't get distracted with putting too much on my plate. And as I shared in my last episode, once I finally lifted up my head from all the work and looked around at what I had accomplished in year one of entrepreneurship, that's when I was able to breathe this huge sigh of relief because I was like, wow, I really did it. I left my job. I started working for myself. I exceeded my goals for revenue each month. And I I did what I said I was going to do. I turned my podcast into a business. That's what I set out to do, and I did it. Not just a business, but a six-figure business. Yes, that's how much I generated in revenue in 2018. To take you back, for those of you just joining me for the first time, I left a six-figure job. Before I went out on my own, I quit my six-figure job at NPR. And in order to do that, part of my mindset was, okay, I'll be happy if I just cover my expenses every month. This is my first year. I'm not going to expect to match my salary or anything like that. I just need to cover my business and life expenses every month. But I ended up doing more than that. I was able to save. I was able to take my honeymoon. I was able to go to Disney World on the fly with my family. I was able to support friends at their weddings without feeling stretched, flying all over the place. And it was just a good feeling. So (laughs) I know as I'm saying all this, I'm like, I still sound kind of surprised by all of this, right? And that's because although I had been putting my system and, and my plan into place before I left NPR, my big thing is, you know, make a plan, work a plan. I always say that that's that's how I got through moments where I might have felt doubt, you know, make a plan, work the plan, right? So although I had been putting the system and the plan into place, you never truly know what to expect when you quit your job. You never know what's going to happen. I listen to stories from entrepreneurs each and every day, every week. So I know that the unexpected likes to happen. Life can throw so many curveballs at you. And don't get me wrong, I, I had my share of curveballs in 2018. For example, just to give you a taste, right? My biggest contract of 2018 didn't end up paying me in 2018. So that's just one. So that's a curveball where I had to readjust my entire budget around that. And I told y'all that that's the life we live when a part of our business requires invoicing and waiting for payment. But the one thing that kept me consistent and on an upward trajectory, even when things in life were a little, you know, topsy-turvy, a little inconsistent, The thing that kept me, myself, consistent was my system of getting work done in my business. I always come back to this because it really works. It works for me. It's worked for others. And it's the goal getter action plan. That is the reason I was able to turn my podcast into a six-figure business. So in this episode, I'm going to address how I was able to push past overwhelm and fear and make moves and how you can do the same. So I'm going to help you quit all that analysis paralysis that keeps us stuck and help you to make your own moves on your own side hustle. And full transparency, this episode will only cover so much. So if you want to actually see my system in action and get the tools to replicate my process, I highly, highly recommend copying the Goal Getter Action Plan training to help you master my system. Now, for those of you, again, who are new, the Goal Getter Action Plan, what it is, is it's my system for eliminating overwhelm and increasing your productivity and getting things done. And you can get it at sidehustlepro.co slash goal getter. And I'm really excited because... This year, I have completely revamped it. I have revamped the Goal Getter Action Plan and have refined it to be even more effective. Why? Because I pay attention. I listen to what people email me and say in response. And I love unpacking all of that and figuring out people's pain points. And the reason that I'm doing this episode and the reason that I revamped it is because 
I want to make sure that I'm helping people to weed out all the different goals and stuff they're setting for themselves that are not actually related to their business being successful and focusing on what they need to be doing. So I have an even better understanding of why some people struggle with running their side hustle. And I've been able to completely refine, learn from the feedback and put it all together for you. So The Goal Getter Action Plan now includes six modules with step-by-step video training from me. So if you're struggling with finding the time, for example, to work on your side hustle, this one is especially for you because I started this when I was juggling my side hustle, which was my podcast, and working full-time at NPR. So I'll give you more details on that at the end of the show. So listen through to the end, please, to get more info plus the discount code because there is a special price for New Year's right now. So stay tuned for that. Now, now I want to get into um, sharing the system. So you don't have to buy the Goal Getter Action Plan. You can just listen to this episode, right? And you'll get a lot of value to get going today. That's if you really want to start mastering it. So I saw a quote the other day that reminded me why the Goal Getter Action Plan is so important. And the quote was, you might have seen this too if you follow Diddy. (laughs) The quote says, If you don't take the time to design and plan your life, you will have to settle for what life gives you. Ooh, that's so, you know, like, oh, man, if I don't do this now, like my whole life is going to (laughs) suck. And here's the thing about this quote. I'm actually not a proponent of this quote. It makes it seem as if your life is something you have to sit down and plan out in its entirety today or your life is going to suck. And we all know life has too many curveballs for us to think we can do that. You can't design and plan your life all in one day. And that quote represents how a lot of us are taught change. We're taught change like it's this big thing we have to do. Once the new year kicks off, we make our resolutions and we work on changing overnight. Words like, you know, drastic and overhaul come to mind. You often see that in different marketing plans, different new launches and things that people are advertising to you. But I actually don't believe in that. I don't even believe in sitting down and writing out goals for the whole year anymore. I don't don't believe in trying to do all of that at one time. Here's what I learned in the last 365 days. Here's what worked for me. While I was quietly being a first-year entrepreneur and building a six-figure business, I learned that change and progress just simply doesn't happen quickly. It happens incrementally with consistent steps. And I'm not going to act like I invented this idea, right? It's not something new, but it's something we have to remind ourselves. It's something that, you know, is taught in the book, The Slight Edge. It's something that you will hear about other places, but it's not something you really master and you truly adopt until you step back and look at all your fails over your entire lifetime and start to connect the dots and and see the common threads. And you realize the times when I failed, the times when, you know, I set out to accomplish a goal and I did it, a lot of times it was because I was expecting that goal to happen way, way, way too fast and with way too few of steps. I I was thinking that I could just do X, not even X, Y, Z, A, B, C, and I would get there, not realizing that I had to do all the way A to Z to get there. So it's not about planning your life. It's about planning your next move, just your next move, literally what you're going to do in the next 24 hours. That is what breeds success. Your life will start to change when you just focus on mastering your next move. That's it. For example, here's how I used to approach my goals. You know, a new year would come. I'd write it all down in my journal because I still do keep a physical journal where I write my thoughts down. And I used to love sitting down like I'm doing now, except with my journal and like writing down all these goals for the year. Then at the end of the year, I would look back at that journal and I would only have accomplished one or two things because 
underneath those goals, I didn't have any plans. I didn't have any steps. I had no breakdown of what I needed to do to help me move towards that goal, aka I had no outline of my next move. Even if I knew in my mind, like we all know in our mind, right, the things that you need to do, like, oh, I should probably do X, Y, and Z if I want to accomplish this. But you have to write them down. Not writing those steps down will keep that goal too elusive, too high level, too broad. I knew that I needed to write them down and break them down into micro steps. That is what I look back and see when I see how I used to approach goals. Let me know if this sounds familiar, y'all. And and you can hit me up, by the way, in our Facebook group. Feel free to tag me as you're listening to this episode. After you listen to this episode, let me know. So after a while, it became like three months into the year After I'd set like those large goals and things started to look kind of daunting and overwhelming, like the the more the year went on, the less achievable those goals seem. And then I just started avoiding those goals. Then I started pushing them back and saying things like, oh, I'll I'll tackle that in October. That'll be Q4. But nothing nothing was going to change. I was saying that as if October was going to be some magical time when I would all of a sudden be more productive. Think about it. How many times have you started a new workout program and thought you could go from zero to 100 overnight or go from drinking like 10 ounces of water to all of a sudden drinking a gallon every day or go from eating toast every morning for breakfast to cutting out carbs completely. I know I'm not the only one who tries these drastic moves and then you end up pushing it back, pushing it back. It's all too daunting or you do it for two days, 10 days and it's a wrap. Now, when I became a side hustler, though, Again, I looked back at my track record and I knew that all of this had to switch. There was no way that if I wanted to make money, if I wanted to leave my job, that I could keep not achieving my goals. That wasn't going to work. I really, really had to figure out, okay, how am I going to actually get things done and not be so intimidated by my goals that I keep putting them off and putting them off? So... I had to look at it like, okay, what is it about the goals itself that I am not getting them done? For me, it was always coming back to having too big a goal and too long of a timeline to accomplish the goal. So that's when I decided I was going to break my year down into 12-week cycles, and that's where we are today. That is the origin of the simple system that we'll talk about today. Hey guys, it's Nikayla here with a quick word from our sponsors. I remember when I first turned my side hustle into a business. It was no easy feat. It took a lot of commitment, working before and after work, and even on my lunch break. Bottom line, I always had something to do. So why not make things a little easier? Well, our friends at FreshBooks have the solution. FreshBooks invoicing and accounting software is designed specifically for small business owners. It's simple, intuitive, and keeps you way more organized than having your own little Excel spreadsheet or checking your bank account every minute. FreshBooks lets you create and send professional looking invoices in 30 seconds and then get paid two times faster with automated online payments. Plus, file expenses even quicker and keep them perfectly organized for tax time. And the best part, FreshBooks grows alongside your business. So you'll always have the tools you need when you need them without ever having to learn accounting. Try it free for 30 days, no catch and no credit card required. Go to freshbooks.com slash side hustle pro and enter side hustle pro in the how did you hear about us section to get started. If you are side hustling, I know that you need to constantly learn new skills to do things like put up your own website, market your business, and so much more. That's why I keep Skillshare in my business arsenal. Skillshare is an online learning community for creators. There are over 25,000 classes in subjects like Photoshop, accounting, copywriting, and even podcasting. 
That's right. I recently published the How to Start Your Own Podcast, Podcasting for Beginners course on Skillshare. So now you can learn all of my podcasting secrets over on Skillshare. Whether you're looking to start a podcast, though, or just grow your side hustle or gain new professional skills, Skillshare is there to keep you learning, thriving and reaching these new year goals. I, for one, have a course on copywriting next up in my Save Skillshare classes. And now Skillshare has a special new year offer just for Side Hustle Pro listeners. Get two months of unlimited access to over 25,000 classes for free. To sign up, go to Skillshare.com slash Nikayla. That's N-I-C-A-I-L-A. Again, go to Skillshare.com slash Nikayla to start your two months now. One more time, that's Skillshare.com slash Nikayla. N-I-C-A-I-L-A. Okay, so now let's get into my system. And remember, this system started before I left my job. So this started when I was working in my cube at NPR, trying to figure out how to make more money off my side hustle, this podcast, Side Hustle Pro. These steps allowed me to juggle my side hustle and start earning real income from my side hustle to leave my job and grow a six-figure business. And remember, at the time, I was doing a lot. I'll talk about this toward the end when I talk about results, but I was planning a wedding. I had a coworker go out on maternity leave, so I was doing two jobs. When I look back at it, I was doing the most, but this system helped me to juggle that all. So here's the basics. And again, I go into much greater detail in the video trainings within the Goal Getter Action Plan, but I want you to know you can get started today. So I am going to go through the basics in this episode. So first thing you want to do, you want to ask yourself, what are the goals I want to focus on in the next 90 days? You need to identify all the things that you think you want to achieve. I'm talking about everything, right? And my recommendation is always to write down every single thing you think you need to accomplish in your side hustle. From the most immediate, it can be really small, like I want to purchase my domain, to further down the line, like I want to host my first event. Then you're going to break down these big goals into action items. So circle your top three goals for the next three months. So I know you just wrote down this list of everything you need to do, want to do, right? You know you're not going to go from zero to 100. We already talked about this. (laughs) So realistically, you can only focus on a few goals at a time. So now let's get really, really specific. Keep in mind that A goal is something you can measure. So make sure that you're setting measurable goals. If I want to secure two new sponsors, that's measurable. I can measure whether I secured one, two, or three. If you want to become a successful podcast, that is vague and not measurable. We have to break that down into whether it's a download goal and what have you. So now circle your top three measurable goals And to help you with choosing the top three, another thing I like to do is to break up my months into themes. For example, for January, my theme might be batch recording, just taking care of batch recording episodes for all of first quarter 2019. And since that's my theme, that helps me to isolate my action items for the month. I'll know I need to focus on guest research. I need to focus on guest outreach. I need to write bulk show notes for the website. I need to write social media posts in advance and so on and so on. All of those action items roll up to that monthly theme. So once you have your top three goals identified, then you can write down your own action items. So write down four to five action items per month that will help you move the needle to accomplish your goal, your goal for the month. Please, please keep it to no more than four to five. I know you might be thinking, all right, I could do much more than this. I could, I could take on like, you know, 20 things this month. But trust me, trust me on this. You want to keep it simple. The simple helps you move further and accomplish more. Remember, this plan is to help you navigate curveballs. And the simple makes sure you can adapt and still check off your action items and still accomplish that goal because it accounts for that. So 
Make sure you're only set in four to five. This also gives you time to focus on one action item per week. The next thing you're going to do is decide which action item you will focus on in which week. So pull out your calendar and actually schedule in the times you will work on that particular action item. So all of those action items that you wrote down, they should have a date or multiple dates, depending on what it is where you're focused on that thing. And again, because it's only four to five, you can have a week assigned to each one. So the really the most important part of these steps is making sure that you're adjusting your action items to your work style. What do I mean by that? I set start times and I set work hours that are realistic to me. And I gave myself simple steps to do every day. So simple. You might think it's like ridiculous. Like, really, that's that's your only goal for the day, Nikayla. But yes, because those goals add up. There are times when I would feel so unproductive, but I would look back at my, you know, 90 day, my 12 week cycle. And I would say to myself, whoa, I checked off every single goal that I set for myself. So I may have a day where I felt like I was unproductive, but I'm always, always working towards those goals. And I meet them because I schedule my plan accordingly. For example, I didn't put gym at 6 a.m. on my calendar because I knew I would be asleep. (laughs) I didn't schedule a call at 8 a.m. because I knew I wouldn't feel most ready, most alert at that time. My most productive hours are in the afternoon. So I schedule my action items around those times. Your final step is to hold yourself accounting with daily tracking. So Look at what you're doing. Look at how you're tracking against your action items. And this can be done a multitude of ways, from a blank notebook to on your calendar itself, to your notes app, to on a spreadsheet, whatever is most natural for you to keep a running daily tally and check off the action item for the week or the day. Do that. Okay, do the one that matches your style. In the Goal Getter Action Plan, I do provide both a worksheet and a link out to a spreadsheet template so you can have options on what you do to and what you use to keep track of everything. So I share both of those because at any given time, I switch it up. You know, the first 90 days of the year, I might use my notebook. The second, I might want to do my spreadsheet. Right now, I'm really jamming with the spreadsheet I created, so I switch it up. The point is that you you use what's working for you, and this is what I mean again about being flexible, right? So finally, I want you guys to identify your mental block breaker. What the heck is that? Okay, I run into a lot of mental blocks. I don't know if it's being a creative. I don't know if it's being a Pisces. I really don't know what it is, <laughs> but... I would be lying if I said that I did not. It, a matter of fact, if you follow me on Twitter, you probably remember me tweeting about how I was really stuck for like a week. I, I tweeted that back in the summer or in the fall, and I was finally able to break through. The key that I've learned to pushing past these mental blocks is to recalculate instead of beating yourself up. Yes, just like the GPS, you got to find a new route. So what I mean by identifying your mental block breaker is identify what action is going to help you break through that mental block. And it's that's going to be a small action that you take to create forward momentum. Because a lot of times, the reasons why we run into the mental block, especially for me, is because we were trying to do a very big action. When we initially wrote it down, we thought it was small enough, but it turns out it something about it overwhelmed us, something about it intimidated us, so we got to smash that thing into spithereens. So the key to pushing past, again, is to identify that small action that you can take to create forward momentum. Once you take this small step that gets the ball rolling, you'll be able to tackle the bigger task and you'll be able to see more clearly how you can break down your goal into smaller action items. But it all starts with that one, that mental block breaker. Again, the most common reason that I've found that I've run into mental blocks is when I accidentally set my goal a little too big. And I just really hadn't divided it up into small enough action items. I'll give you an example. 
So you guys know, based on the announcement that I made, that I now have a Skillshare course, How to Start Your Own Podcast. Now, when I first set out to outline this Skillshare course, I had analysis paralysis. I was overthinking it because, you know, podcasting is there's just so much I can teach. But I knew I wanted to make sure that I really broke things down for beginners. So I decided, you know what? Instead of overthinking my outline and having analysis paralysis, I'm just going to outline lesson one. That's it. And then the next day, I'm going to do the slides for lesson one. So I was still focused on lesson one. So instead of being intimidated on how am I going to break down this immense topic into the most impactful 10 module course for beginners, I said to myself, Let me focus on building this program one module, one brick at a time. And that was my mental block breaker. And it came out awesome, if I do say so myself, okay? Not biased at all. (laughs) So keep that in mind. Your mental block breaker is the small step you can take to get that forward momentum. And it's going to be different for every single action item, but It's the concept itself that will help you. If you say to yourself, okay, I've been avoiding this. I don't know why. I think that I need to break this down. Let me see what's the small step I can take. And then you'll find yourself able to keep it moving. So I know that my system sounds pretty simple and I'm okay with that. I am so okay with that because I've said it before and I'll say it again. There's nothing wrong with simple We start out the new year trying to do so many complex things, and that is why we fail, because you have to master simple before you can tackle advanced. It's actually life-changing what happens when you just do the simple, straightforward thing consistently. That is how you make moves. That is how I've been able to grow Side Hustle Pro. And so I want you to master simple and I want you to not, you know, turn your nose up at simple. I want you to realize that, hey, I can't just do simple once. I need to actually master this over an extended period of time and watch what I do. Watch me work. Your goals can be accomplished, but only if you take action on them. And the only thing that stops us from taking action is when we run into those blocks, when we run into that overwhelm. And it's bound to happen. I'm going to tell you right now, it's going to happen to me. It's going to happen to you because you're going to take on new and exciting challenges. And new and exciting challenges come with entering territories where you're doing things that you've never done before. And what happens to me when I'm doing things that I've never done before is I run into those mental blocks. Can I do this? How do I do this? Oh, my God, I've never done this before. And that's where we got to make sure that we have a system in place that helps us to push through that overwhelm and get unstuck. So I want to give you a little reminder of what I was able to accomplish last year as a result of the Goal Getter Action Plan. So first and foremost, I was able to publish a podcast episode every week, including while on my honeymoon. I was able to develop my podcast accelerator from scratch without letting excuses and overwhelm stop me. I was flown out to speak in Barbados at the Caribbean Startup Summit. I was paid to be a keynote speaker. I was able to secure new sponsorships, including with a major movie studio. And I was able to manage my business with a very small team. I was also able to secure new features on TED, CNBC, and more. And finally, I was able to make six figures in revenue my first year of entrepreneurship out of the gate. And it's all because I have this foundational system that keeps me moving forward. I want to remind you, too, that I was using this system before I left my job. I was using this system while I was working full time. And here's what I was able to accomplish while I was side hustling. I was able to open my LLC and my business bank account, create a pitch deck and media kit, pitch and secure my first four sponsors, land amazing guests like Lisa Price and Miley Teal, plan a two-day 350 guest wedding and get married to my husband. He likes to remind me it was actually like 400 people. It was supposed to be 350. Anyway, grow my Instagram following to over 34,000. 
get featured in Mashable and other publications, juggle a full-time job and grow a podcast on the side, and make over 15000 in revenue when my podcast was just a side hustle. It's all because I have this foundational system that keeps me moving forward. So if you are okay going at it alone with the steps I just shared, cool beans, no worries, no offense taken, but If you want to make this year much different than last year, I really suggest you change up your approach. Stop trying to do it yourself. I encourage you to check out the Goal Getter Action Plan. You have nothing to lose, right? In the course, I share over the course of six modules how to actually master this system. So I train you in video trainings and I include not only the six modules, but a complete goal-defining roadmap and a goal-to-action worksheet to help you set your monthly goals, set your weekly action items, and hold yourself accountable. I also give you a business goal blueprint to map out which aspect of your business you should be working on and when. And finally, a productivity toolkit, which is a comprehensive resource list of 20 productivity tools and strategies to keep you on task and help you to kick procrastination to the curb because we are not doing that in 2019, okay? Now, like I said, I am very flexible. And within this program, once you start to master it, you too will get into your own groove of how to stay on track while still giving yourself grace. It's so important to give yourself grace. I really learned that in the past year. And that's why I share with you that I have those moments. But the biggest thing you gain from it is how to keep yourself moving in a forward direction at all times. And like I said in the beginning, I do have a special treat for my listeners. For the next week only, you can purchase the Goal Getter Action Plan for just $49 with code 2019. That's 2019. After that, The price will jump up, you guys. So please, please grab it at the new year rate because I know some of you might try to hit me up like, Michaela, I'm trying the code. It's not working. The next week only, the price will go away after the episode airs. The normal price is going to go back up to 98. So get it now for 50% off while you can. Head over to sidehustlepro.co slash goal getter to snag your own goal getter action plan. And remember to enter code 2019 to get the $49 price. It will be linked in the show notes. If you're listening, you can just click on the podcast image and you'll see the show notes or scroll down. You'll see the show notes and you can click on that and purchase it on your phone. Alrighty, guys, I look forward to us slaying our goals together. And there you have it. Hey guys, thanks for listening to Side Hustle Pro. If you want to hear more from me, head on over to sidehustlepro.co forward slash side hustle corner to get my weekly side hustle diaries chronicles about my own journey from passion project to profitable business. And if you want to find me online, I'm at Side Hustle Pro on Instagram, Twitter, and Facebook. Don't forget to join the Side Hustle Pro Facebook community. Go to sidehustlepro.co forward slash mastermind. And as always, if you love the show, do me a favor and subscribe, rate, and review on iTunes. Thanks, guys. Talk to you next week. Thank you.